Today we're going to go through lesson 6.4 titled Sampling Distributions and Estimators. And our objective for this lesson is to determine biased and unbiased estimators of population parameters and then the properties of sampling distributions. So before we get too far, let's talk about what the sampling distribution of a statistic is. And we're going to look at mean and variance and proportion specifically today. But a sampling distribution is just a distribution of all values of the statistic that we're looking for when all possible samples of the same size, n, are taken from the same population. You're going to see that in several of uh, the definitions today. So let's go ahead and get going. Let's talk about the sampling distribution of the mean. And you can see the definition here, the sampling distribution of the mean, is the distribution of sample means with all samples having the same size and taken from the same population. Now to look at that, let's look at a spreadsheet that I've made. And I know we've got sample variance and is the roll of the dice odd? We're going to get to all that in a little bit. But let's just first talk about the sample mean. And what we've done is we have uh, a die and we're going to roll the die five times and record the results. Sorry about the bell. All right, so in the first sample that we have, we rolled a die. We got a 4, a 6, a 5, a 1, and a 1 on the five, se five separate rolls. And the mean of that sample, if I were to add up 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 and divide by the five rolls, I get a mean of 3.4. And I do it again, second time. I get 6, 4, 3, 1, 1, and I get a mean of 3. 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, I get a mean of 2.2, .2, a lot of low rolls. 5, 6, 3, 1, 3, et cetera. And what I've done is I take 12, I think there's 12, there might be more than that, rolls of the, of the die five times, and I get all of these means. And what I'm going to do is find the mean of those sample means. And when we calculate all these means and find the mean, the average of those, we get 3.6. So this would be an example of a sampling distribution of the sample means. So when we did those trials and found the mean of the sample means, we got 3.6. Let's think about what we would expect to get if we rolled a die five times. But before that, let's think about if we roll the die one time. What is our expected value if we roll a die one time? Well, it would be the average of what we get. We get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And if we add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and divide by 6, then we would get an expected value of 3.5. Well, we can see that we got 3.4 here. Let me get my pen right. We got 3.4, 3.6, 3.4, 3.4. Um, we never did get 3.5 because all of these are coming out to be even decimals. But our mean was relatively close to that number of 3.5. And this was with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We did 14 trials on this one. Now, if we did some more trials, if we did, let's see, I've got another 14, it looks like, right there. And I've put these into Excel as a random uh, number, so it's going to generate a random number for each roll. In the first one, you got a sample mean of 3.6 and 1.4 and 3.0 and 3.2, 4.2. 2. If we added all 14 of these together, then our mean of the sample means was 3.2. Well, let's do that again. And I'll have to get out of this. And I'm going to generate a brand new set. We get a sample mean of, uh, the mean of the sample means is 3.3. If I do it again, I get 3.5. If I do it again, I get 3.2 and so on. I can keep generating all these rolls of the die and take this mean of the sample means and evaluate that. So if I take all of these, oops, not what I wanted to do. If I take all of these sample means, these means of the sample means, and do this uh, trial, let's say 10,000 times, 
Okay, I've gone through and generated about eight different ones. So if I go through and do this sample 10,000 times, and I keep getting these different means of sample means right here, then that has a certain property. And let's look at a couple of those properties. The sample means, we say that they target the value of the population mean. That is, the mean of the sample means is going to end up being the population mean. The expected value of the sample mean is equal to the population mean. Now, if I just do one trial of, of rolling the die 14 times, uh, in that first example, I had a, a mean of the sample means of 3.6. Now, we expected to get 3.5. But if I were to do those 14 rolls, or those 14 trials of five rolls, 10,000 times, I would expect to have a mean of the sample means to be 3.5. It's going to target that expected value, and that's awfully important. The second thing is that the distribution of the sample means, sorry about that, the distribution of the sample means tends to be a normal distribution. That is, if I did this trial, oops, That is, if I did this trial 10,000 times, I would expect this. That if I found the sample means, we're going to put 3.5 right here because that's what we expect. And maybe here's 4.0 and 4.5. Do 3.0 and 2.5. If I were to plot, there's 3.6, and another time I get 3.4, and maybe I get 3.8, and then another 3.6, and maybe a 3.4 and so on, I start to get all of these values and I plot them all, what I'm going to expect is a normal distribution. And that's number two. The distribution of the sample means tends to be a normal distribution. We're going to discuss this further in the next section, but as the sample size gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then this distribution of the sample means what this is right here. These are all of the sample means. It tends to be a normal distribution. The next sampling distribution we want to look at is a sampling distribution of the variance. That's the distribution of all the sample variances with all the samples having the same size, uh, same sample size n taken from the same population. Again, that's you're going to see that through all these definitions. And we'll look at these important properties in just a second, but first of all, what is the variance? Well, the variance is just the square of the standard deviation. And we work with some formulas on that. Um, we had a calculator that would find variance, but I used Excel to find the variance. So let's go back to the first trials that we did. And I'm going to take a second to erase the markings on the means, or at least get most of them off of there. Now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the sample variances. In our sample variance, I just used an Excel formula to find the variances. And if we rolled, first trial is 4, 6, 5, 1, 1. And the variance of that sample is 5.3, because there was quite a bit of range. We had a 1, a 1, we had a 6, and a 5, and a 4. The, the spread of those numbers was quite a bit. If we look at a problem like the third trial, where we had 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, there's not a lot of variance there. All, all five rolls were between 1 and 3. So you notice the variance on this sample was 1.2. It's a lot lower, a lot less variance. You even see there's one of 0.7 down here, where all the numbers we rolled were 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5. So the larger the spread, the larger the variance. And we found all the variances of all the rolls and then found the mean of those sample variances to be 2.9. Well, if we look at the other spreadsheet, I'll take a second to get rid of those. If we look at just the variances, here are the variances of the 14 trials, and we got a mean of the sample variances of 2.6. And if we were to regenerate, if we were to regenerate those numbers, 
So I'll double click in here, maybe. We get another set, we get 3.1. We get another set, I get 3.2. Another set, I get 3.4. 3.0, 3.0, 3.1, and so on. That's going to get us to some certain properties about the variance. The first important property of the sampling distribution of variance is that the sample variances also target the population variance. Just like the sample means targeted the population mean, the sample variances target the population variance. That is, the mean of the sample variances is the population variance. The expected value of the sample variance is equal to the population. And the second one in there is the distribution of the sample variances tends to be a distribution skewed to the right. So if we took our sample variances and, and graphed them, we'll put 3.5 here and we'll do 4 just like we did with the means, 4.5. Uh, this would have been 3.0, 2.5. Now remember, we had some of them. I even saw one of 0 0.7 on the variance. So we'll start here with 0. What we're going to find is the variances, if we were to plot them, tend to have this kind of a pattern. That is, if we connected the dots or we put them underneath a picture, it would look like this, where it is skewed to the right. Remember we said when we skew to the right, it has a longer tail to the right. So the distribution of the sample variances is not normal like the sample means were, but it tends to be skewed to the right. That means most of the data is in a big hump here, kind of to the left. Okay, so we've looked at means, we've looked at uh, variances. Now let's look at proportions. This is something we haven't done a lot with, uh, but we're gonna do more with proportions. The sampling distribution of a proportion is the distribution of sample proportions with all samples having the same sample size n taken from the same population. And a couple notations for proportion that are kind of important. P is the population proportion. And here is a new uh, symbol for us, and that is P hat. It's a P with like a little arrow on top of it. P hat is our notation for a sample proportion. And we're going to do a lot more with p hat values as uh, the class progresses. So let's look at um, some sample proportions. And here's what we're talking about. Uh, I'll go back to our spreadsheet. And I'm going to get these markings out of here. Boom, they're gone. And what we're going to do is look at the proportion of um, the die that come up to be odd, let's say, the proportion of odd numbers when we roll a die. So for example, in the first roll that we did, four was even, six was even, five was odd, the fourth roll was odd, and the fifth roll was odd. So our proportion on this one, the number of odd uh, die that we get, we got three odds out of five, so our proportion would be 0.6. In the second roll, we have one, two, three odd. So again, three out of five, or 0.6. In the fourth one, we got one, two, three, four, five of them. All of them were odd. So our proportion would be five out of five, or 1.0. Fill those in. Let's talk about what our expected value would be. When we roll one die, how many times will it come up odd? out of how many are possible? Well, we could get a 1, a 3, or a 5 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we would expect to get 0.5. Now because we only have 5 rolls of the die, we get 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.1. This next one we have 1, 2, 3, 4 of them are odd, we get 0.8, and so on. And so on this spreadsheet, what I've done is come up with a formula that's going to give us our sample proportion when we roll a die. So we got 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 1, 0 0.8. Notice this one was 0 0.0. All uh, five of the die came up to be even. So if we take all of these sample proportions and then find the mean of the sample proportions, we get 0 0.6. Let's go to our other, oops, let's go to our other workbook in here and we can uh, look at all the sample proportions. 
On here, when we found the mean of the sample proportions for that particular role, we got 0.5. If I were to come over and regenerate this again and scroll over, we get another 0.5, another 0.5, another 0.6, 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and you can kind of see if we were to do a distribution of all of the means of the sample proportions, we're probably going to be relatively around 0.5 most of the time. And that's going to get to our important properties of the sampling proportion. One, the sample proportions target the value of the population proportion. So if we would find all those means of the sample proportions and put them all together, we're going to approach that 0.5. And then number two, I think you can see that the distribution of the sample proportions tends to be normal. And when we did this, we expect 0.5. We had a whole bunch of them that were between 0.4 and 0.6. So we would have a lot of data points in here and then very few out here at the tails, giving us a very normal distribution when we have the distribution of the sample proportions. So why did we focus on the mean, the variance, and proportion? Well, they're called unbiased estimators. And an unbiased estimator is they're those sampling distributions that tend to target the actual population parameters. So if we find the mean of the, the means, it's going to actually target what the population mean should be. And the same with the variance and the same with the proportions. So if we want to use a sample to make a generalization about a population, which is the goal of statistics, we need to use these distributions that target the actual population parameter. So we're going to spend a lot of time working on mean, variance, and proportion. They are considered unbiased. Now, biased estimators, such as med uh, median range and standard deviation, we're going to talk about this note here, they tend to systematically underestimate or overestimate the population parameter. So if we found the sampling distribution of all the medians and we were to actually compare that with the population median, we would find that they don't target those sample the distributions don't target the actual median, and it has to do with kind of the mathematics behind it. But the important note that I want to talk about is right here on standard deviation. It does not target the population standard deviation. However, it says that the bias is relatively small in large samples. We're talking large samples in the thousands. So the population standard deviation S, okay, if we found the sampling distribution of the standard deviations of a sample, it's often used to estimate the population standard deviation even though it's considered biased. But again, we're talking about large sample sizes here. So our unbiased ones are these three. That's what you're going to work with most today. But understand that standard deviation, although it is biased, when we get very large samples, then it, it tends to uh, target relatively closely the population standard deviation. Okay, the last thing I want you to do before class tomorrow is to look at pages 284 and 285 in your textbook. And it talks about why we sample with replacement uh, when we're doing these things. So just take a minute to go through it, and it's only two paragraphs long. Uh, but instead of writing it all out uh, in the presentation, I want you to take a second to read that as well as the caution uh, box at the end of 285 where it says many methods of statistics require a simple random sample. Some samples such as voluntary response or convenience could easily result in very wrong results. So it may be that you're finding the sampling distribution of the means, but if your sample wasn't done well, then the uh, data you get is basically garbage. So make sure that you have a good sample first of all and then you can apply the methods of this section. So that's lesson 6-4, sampling distributions and estimators. Um, so the objective was to determine biased and unbiased estimators and I think we've done that as well as go through the properties of each of these sampling distributions.